This week, we're continuing in Reverb Coffee's Coffee Summer School. We're kicking it old school with... James Brown Classical Music. No, pour over coffee. Okay, so the pour over method, or as I like to call it, uh, kind of the poor man's drip. That's what I that's what I think when I see you do it. So anyway, I think everyone's going to be. It's going to make sense to all the viewers that drink coffee what's going on here, but maybe yeah. they've never done it before. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty simple method, um, but it makes fantastic coffee. It's been around for a while, kind of lost steam there for twenty or thirty years, but just recently with the new wave of specialty coffee is kind of catching back on again and um, you know hopefully I teach you to do it the right way and this is probably my favorite way to drink coffee depending on the roast level so oh, okay. it's some pretty good stuff it's got to be good then if the coffee guy likes it well let's get to it then let's do it well welcome back to reverb coffee company summer school today we're talking about pour over methods so let's get started um, since it's pour over obviously you're gonna need a pour over brewer and a filter. Uh, the first thing I like to do is fold this filter right at the seam and then put it back into the brewer. Just make sure that it sits in there a little more evenly and better. Um, coffee cup, some fresh roasted coffee, a timer, and for this method unlike the French press you will need a precision pour kettle to make sure you're getting the water exactly where you want to. Uh, scale and some ground coffee and for this method I like to go in between a fine drip and an espresso a good consistency I like to think of is table salt um, and I usually grind a little bit finer than most people recommend and I'll tell you how you can adjust your grind to make sure you're you're right on with your grind later on so that's all the tools you're gonna need for this method so let's get started so like I said in the French press tutorial, uh, most of my coffee brewing methods all boil down to a simple ratio. Um, for French press it was you know 16 to 18 to 1. For this pour over it makes a stronger cup so we're looking for about a 13 to 1 ratio and for lighter roasted coffees we're going to go like a 12 to 1 ratio to get the, the punch of that light roasted flavor to come through. So that's the ratio you need to know so let's go ahead and get started brewing. As I already showed you, the um, paper filter is folded at the seam to get it to sit into the brewer. And the first thing I do is I'm going to wet the filter with some hot water that I've boiled off. And this is going to do three different things. It's going to heat up the brewer, heat up the cup, and it's also going to get the paper taste out of the filter. Um, depending on what kind of filter you have, it could be a little taste or a lot of paper taste. But you know, pouring the hot water down through first is going to get rid of you know, almost all of that. I'll go ahead and dump out your water. Go ahead and put your coffee in. I like to give it a little shake to make sure all the grounds are settled in at the bottom. And at this point is when you're going to want to go ahead and zero off your scale. So we've got our coffee grounds in the filter and in the brewer. Um, if you're if you search on YouTube or anything, you'll see a lot of different brew methods about the pour over. So each kind of one will have its own intricacies and differences. One thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead and take my knuckle and just give it a little bit of divot right there in the middle. Kind of lets, uh, you'll see what the point is in just a second. So we've got this on here. We've got our scale zeroed off. And like I said, the ratio is 13 to 1. So right now I have 0.9 ounces of coffee and I'm gonna make 12 ounces of coffee so you can adjust that ratio and play with it depending on how much coffee you want to make so the first step of this is to um, do what we call a pre-infusion so go ahead and start your timer and your pour at the same time and 
And at this stage, you're going to want to go ahead and just pour like a little over an ounce of water. All you're really trying to do is get all the grounds wet so they can go ahead and start blooming and letting those gases out and release. And if you have a fresh coffee, it's really cool. Uh, I can show it to you here. So you can see it's kind of bubbling up and, and uh, rising. Since it's fresh, it's giving off those gases and really doing what it's supposed to do at this time. So after 30 seconds, you're going to go ahead and start your first pour. And uh, on this pour, you're going to go up three more ounces of water after your, um, after your pre-infusion. And what I did there was knock, knock the filter onto the cup to go ahead and resettle the grounds down at the bottom. That way, at the end of the cup, you'll have a, an even grounds bed down on the bottom of your filter. And there's a lot of different methods that will teach you, um, but really the only pointer I have is to... Um, keep all the grounds wet so I'll usually do four ounces at a time so I'm going to go up to eight ounces and the trick is not to put too much water to make the the grounds rise up in the filter because then it's going to be an uneven brew because some of the grounds at the bottom are going to be over extracted and some of the ones at the top are going to be under extracted so just keep an eye on it and make sure all your, your grounds are getting wet and staying evenly brewed and then at this point, I'm going to go ahead and finish up and go to 12 ounces. And for me, I tend to like stronger coffee, really, really strong flavors. So most pour over methods are going to teach you to go between two to two and a half minutes. Um, this one looks like it's going to go about a little over two and a half minutes. And that's because the grind is a little bit finer than what most people are going to recommend. So that's your main variable. This one just finished at... 238 um, so if it goes longer than two minutes and 30 your grind might be a little bit fine and if your coffee comes out in less than two minutes your ground is a little bit too coarse so you need to tighten it up so that's the variable that tells you whether or not you're you're grinding good and I'll give you a, a look at the grounds bed so you can kind of see what's going on there so we started down here and then it came up to here and then as you can see, it's pretty pretty level down at the bottom. There's some pockets, but that's just because it's fresh and those gases were messing with it. So that's pretty much it. It may have seemed like a lot of information, but it's really simple once you uh, once you get it down and do it the first few times to kind of figure out what you're doing. Um, I kept it about as simple as possible. There's different techniques that tell you how to pour differently or start it differently, but Really, it's it's super simple, and it's just like a, a major brewing vessel, but you have all the control over where the water's going, how much water you're putting in there, the grounds, and the temperature of the water. So it's a really awesome method, and I enjoy it. Like I said, it's probably my favorite way to make coffee. So hope you learned something there. Well, there you have it. The coffee roaster expertise lesson on how to do your pour over coffee in the morning, the Hario Brewer method. So hopefully you learned something today and next time you do it, you'll play around with some variables and start making some, some better and some great coffee. Yeah, break out of that boring drip routine that you've got going on. We got yeah. French press, we got the uh, pour over and more to come. So let's make coffee exciting as it should be. It Coffee's should be. a lot of fun. Yes. And um, on that note, I've got one thing I've been wanting to share with y'all, uh, an idea for giving some more reverb coffee away because everyone seems to like free bags of coffee. So uh, I'm going to call it the Lone Wolf Challenge. Uh, so that's exciting. Just the name. Huh? That sounds pretty intense. It's, yeah. So anyway, my thought is I have right now on Facebook, if you go to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash lone wolf video, link uh, in the description below, I've got 60 followers right now. So, you know, hey, that's more than half of 100. But the thought is, if I can get 100 followers, I'm going to give away two bags of Reverb Coffee. And I'm going to let each of the winners choose their favorite roast. And if they want ground or, you know, whole bean. So, uh, this is kind of something to hang out there until we reach that milestone. But I'll try to give a reminder every video or two. Um, but, you know, if you haven't yet, go over to the page and like it. If you have, then... Uh, get your friends to because everyone that is a, a liker of the page uh, is going to have an equal shot at getting a free bag. Nice. So I like your company, so I can get a free bag of Reverb yeah, Coffee. Yeah, you just have to make it and then pay yourself uh, the, okay. the amount you lose. I don't 
Yeah, it'll work that I way. I got you. Too. Yeah, you should go over there and do that. Keep up with him. He posts some interesting articles and obviously all of our videos. Yeah. So. Stay up to date on all things Lone Wolf Video and Espressos with Entrepreneurs. So, on that note, uh, like us on Facebook, like I said already. Jeremy also, Reverb Coffee Company. Twitter, um, maybe Instagram. You know, whatever you want to like yeah. us on. Comment on this video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And uh, until next time. Take yourself extremely seriously. Or don't take yourself. Well, yeah, okay. Sure.